everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of Book Trip After Dark, a Merrill Moss media production. Today we are chatting live with New York Times and USA Today bestselling author, Alyssa Ione. It's so great to have you here. And happy Hi. pub day to you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Larissa's latest release, Z, a Demonica novella, is a new addition to our friends at 1001 Dark Nights, which is a great collection. Um, we have people on all the time, and we just love interviewing all the authors here. So again, welcome back. Uh, we have so many questions coming in from viewers, and I'm going to also, you know, send you through some questions from me. So can you bring us up to speed on Z and just tell us, for anyone who might not, you know, be up to date with all your books, kind of what's going on without giving away too much? Okay. Well, Z is the third book in the Demonica Underworld series that is mm -hmm. with Thousand One Dark Nights exclusively, mm -hmm. and it's all kind of set in um, kind of a, a closed area of um, it's a little section of hell where where all the souls go, and uh -huh. uh, the Green, the Green Reaper runs it with Hades, and um, mm -hmm. Z is is uh, the Grim Reaper's second in command. And mm -hmm. so it's a story about him finding the love of his life who he lost like nearly a century ago um, and he's been looking for her and in Z he finds her but she's not exactly what he expected. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I love that you have like Hades and all what kind of like characters that you hear from. Do you do, do you read a lot of mythology and stuff and do you kind of research that way? Or is it, I do. do you pull from that? Yeah. I, I do a lot of research, and I used to read a lot of mythology. I haven't done it as much as I'd like, um, just because I've been busy, and, right. and also because I've been, you know, when I read, it's usually romance, and right. uh, so I, ha I haven't uh, kept up on my mythology as much as I'd like, but I do do a lot right. of research. I like the incorporating those kind of characters. So much fun. If you could describe your main characters in this book in like three words or less, which is kind of tough, but w what would you say about them? Um, well, uh, arrogant, <laughs> that'll be Z. Uh, yep. He's arrogant, um, virgin, and... Um, Important. <laughs> and he can be a little bit, yeah, he can be a little bit ruthless. So mm -hmm. let's go with those. Uh, nice. For Vex, she is a badass, um, she is sexy, and mm -hmm. yeah, this is more than three words, but she knows what she wants. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Um, now, which one of these characters, if you had to pick one of them, who would you want to spend the day with? Like, who do you think you would mesh with just perfectly? Ooh, um, I'd like to spend time with Vex, but... Mm -hmm. Z's really hot, so I don't know. I, you can go either way with that. And I'd, I'd love to spend the time with any of my characters, really. They're, yeah. um, they're a lot of fun. We'll let you have two. You can do both of them. <laughs> Ooh, damn it. Love it. <laughs> yes. So your Demonica series and Lords of Deliverance are intertwined. Can you give our viewers some background on the stories and how they kind of they meet, if they're not totally aware? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Originally, I started with the Demonica series, which mm -hmm. is set in an underworld hospital filled with demons and, and vampires and werewolves and all kinds of underworld creatures. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got to the fifth book, I introduced the horsemen, um, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right. and started kind of a side series with them, which turned into just one big, massive series of Demonica and, and four horsemen, um, and then. After the Four Horsemen books, I continued again with the Demonica series books, starting with, with uh, Reaver. But mm -hmm. really, they are all connected, all very, very tightly connected with, with arcs um, that go through the first five books, and then the first nine books, and then the first 11 books. And then um, this Demonica Underworld series, although it is independent of the others, it still... Uh, still fits in, and a lot of the characters show up in um, all of the series, really. So I, at least with the Demonica Underworld series, and actually it, the Horsemen or the Demonica series, people can really start at the beginning of each of those and be fine. Um, or you, they can start with the very beginning of Demonica and 
go through them all. That works yeah. too. But it, at least this way, it's kind of broken up so people don't have to be intimidated when they see that, you know, there's a thousand books. That's amazing. How do you find time for this? Like, I'm, you're so busy. How do you balance <sighs> it? Or you're just like, ah, all the time. <laughs> That's, That's how I would exactly be. how I am all the time. I am not an organized person, so I'm constantly going, oh my God, oh, you know, how am I going to do this? No, ask my husband. It's, it's, it's always just a crazy mess inside my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. I can totally, like, hear the characters talking to me, just, like, trying to go to the next book. Some of them pulling me back. I'm sure it would always be, like, playing in my head all the time. Um, it would be hard for me to go from one book to the next, I think. What is that like, just kind of finishing off into the next and going into the next thing? Um, it, yeah, you know, the, fun, the funny thing is it's both uh, a lot of fun. You know, you're looking yeah. forward to it. You're like, ooh, a new project. And then as soon as you open up, open it up, it, you're staring at the blank page, and it's like, ooh, a new project. <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's kind of, you, you get both of those. Yeah. Um, it is a lot of fun, though. In fact, I'm plotting out a new Demonica side series now, um, mm -hmm. and that is the really fun part: is playing with all of these characters and trying to figure out how all the books are going to fit together. The planning stage is always the really, really fun part, and then, like I said, you open it up and you've got the blank page, and you're like, oh, "How am I going to do this?" Um, you're like, "I'm going to go clean the floors or do something you like hate." <laughs> yes, that's what I do. My uh, house is very clean when I'm on deadline, somebody, actually. The house needs to be clean. <laughs> I know, right? Right. So I think that all of these stories are perfect for TV or, like, movie. Have you? Has anything been optioned? Have you, like, I think it would be amazing. Have you ever heard anything? Any interest? Or you're not well, allowed to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm working on something fun with that, but, you know, you never know where it's going to go. But maybe... Mm -hmm. Eventually, I'll have some news on that. I hope so. I think so. It would be it would be amazing. I would love to see the Horsemen personally. Oh yes, so yes. awesome. So we have um two comments. One's from Jillian Greenfield Stein. Hi. She says, if you could spend one day binge watching any TV show, what would it be? Uh, I have spent days binge watching TV shows. Um. Let's see. I think the most recent was probably Big Bang Theory. I bought the entire series and just yeah. sat and watched them from t when they started in 2007 up till now. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been wa binge watched uh, Angel, Buffy, um, mm -hmm. uh, True Blood. I'm I am a binge watcher. Yes. Yeah. I think we talked about Buffy and Angel last time, and we were freaking out about you know how can we not forget <laughs> about. Buffy. So the hospital in the underworld is based on something from Angel or just like you were inspired by Angel, correct? Right. right. Yeah. Now. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I don't remember what I was going to say because it's just, you know, one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hear you. We have another. Um, <laughs> we have another comment from Judy. Hi, Judy. She says. Do you have any thoughts of starting a whole new series for us to fall in love with? Which we kind of just, you just mentioned that. I don't know if she missed it, but um, he has a well, side can, thing. Yeah, I can certainly certainly expand on it. Um, yeah. The new series is going to be called, um, well, tentatively, uh, Demonica Legacy. And I'm jumping forward about 25 years into the future, and I'll be writing about uh, the horsemen's mm -hmm. and the seminist kids. So they'll yep. be all grown up, and um, I'll be working on that. I am so excited. Oh, my gosh. Their kids are just are hilarious. They're, you know, they're fairly well-adjusted. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how well-adjusted can you be when somebody <laughs> like Wraith is your father? It's <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you go to RT this year? Were you in attendance? I did. Awesome. Did you get to hang out with all your 1001 Dark Nights buddies? Love I it. did. We had a blast. I got to hang out with so many people that I haven't seen in a long time. Um, but the my Thousand One Dark Nights buddies are are a lot of fun. Our um, we had a a sparkler, the Thousand One Dark Night Dark Knight sparkler, and we were all there. And uh, I have to I have to just say that Lexi Blake, yeah, she actually made my day. She <laughs> she got revenge on me for killing her off in a book. 
And um, oh, it, it was a blast. Readers had a lot of fun with that. She even made stickers, stickers for her revenge, and she put them on 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 uh, all the guests' shirts and had them come over so that I could see their little their little stickers. It was hilarious. I love it. I got a killer again now, though. So <laughs> sorry, Lexi. Um, any any other fun stories to share? Did you meet anybody new this year that you never met? Have any starstruck moments? Any like you know? Ass? I do that usually at every single conference. There's somebody I meet, and I just stand there with my mouth open and can't really quite say what I'm gonna want to say. And or, and if I do say something, it sounds really really dumb. Um, but this year I I, uh, I had a deadline, so I was in. If I wasn't doing an event. I was up in my room writing, and uh, so yeah. no, I, I didn't get to meet everybody I really wanted to meet this time, but next time, it'll be a goal. Yeah, when you got to write, you got to write, absolutely. Any other conferences you're going to be attending, or do you just not have the time? Uh, not <laughs> until, I believe it's October, I'll be at, at Shameless, so I'm oh. excited about that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, now, you're one of your creatures in this book, it's an MM. Am I pronouncing that right? E M I M. Is that something you came up with, or is that rooted in truth? Is it something true with paranormal kind of mythology? Uh, no, I completely made that up. That uh, okay. yeah, most of the most of my demons um, come from mythology somewhere. But right. no, I, I completely made that one up. I, like I kind of needed I needed her, so I made her up. <laughs> right, exactly. And you're definitely like the master of the vampire story, I have to say. Like, and it's, I know you do research on, you know, different mythology, but you have your own twists on new vampires and like kind of different traits they possess. So, where do you get, other from like Angel and stuff, where do you get some of the inspiration for this? Other TV shows, just like right from outer space? Yes, outer space. Let's go with <laughs> that. Like, okay. <laughs> um, no, really, I just, I don't know. I've, I've just always, I've thought about vampires since like I was a little kid um, because I loved them. Even yeah. as, a, as, a, as a child, one of the first uh, books I read by Stephen King was Salem's Lot. And I've been fascinated with vampires ever since. So um, I think it's just natural just to come up with you know, my own spin on things. So you like weren't the kid with the covers up around your neck. You were the one like with the window open, like waiting for the vampire to visit you. <laughs> no, I still had the covers up to my Are neck. You? Oh, you <laughs> yeah, but I was looking. I, mean, I was peeking. Yeah, <laughs> and I was—I'm still like that. It, it, ooh, scariness. It's under the bed. It's not anything. Ah! You know, it's under the bed. There could be things under there. <laughs> you know, I—I I forget about that, and now I now I know to be terrified of that as well. Now, do you read any other paranormal? you know, books with other creatures, are you, what other stuff are you into? Anything else? Um, you know, as long as it's paranormal, I'm pretty much good with it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you, have you watched Penny Dreadful? Have you watched that show yet? Yes, we watched the first season of it. I have, is it, it's on season two, isn't it? Or did it just have season, season two? I think season three just debuted like a day or so ago. Oh, okay, I'm a season behind then. I need to get caught up. Yeah. I'm way behind, way behind. It's super artsy, like the intro is like, it's gorgeous, just all the close-ups and stuff, but I need, I need to get more into it. What did you think of it? I really liked it. Um, I think, though, what I missed uh, in, cause it's very dark, which I like, Yeah. but there's no humor, and I really, really like to have humor just to kind of take the edge off the darkness sometimes, and I think that that's why I probably didn't get into it as much as I wanted to. Yeah, I thought that makes sense. the same way, but I couldn't really figure out what it was, but I think that that's, that's the part that is missing. There's just, a lot of people are obsessed with it, so I was like totally expecting to be enamored, but not yet, I don't know. Maybe the third season, uh, Yeah, it's good, it's just I, I really, really miss having having a little bit of humor. You need, like, the Buffy humor. I hear you. Yes. So I've heard that you'd love to write a Star Trek novel one day. Can you please elaborate on the Star Trek? Well, I, oh, yes. I, oh, I can talk about Star Trek for a long time. How long do we have? <laughs> um, I just, oh, I love Star Trek. I love it. Um, I've, I've uh, even got a Star Trek tattoo. I think I've told people that before. But, yes, I have a Star Trek tattoo. 
um, I've been on the set of the Next Generation. I've been to um, I've been to conventions, dress up. I'm uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of um, obsessive. But I've always wanted to write a Star Trek book. I've been reading them for years and years and years, and it's just it's one of those those um, things I just you know you got to do before you die. I've yeah. got to write a Star Trek book. Mm -hmm. So eventually that is going to happen. I have all kinds of ideas and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's got to be fan fiction out there. I mean, of course. I've never yeah. read any, but oof, I'm sure there's crazy stuff out there. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy it's stuff out there, yeah. What's your favorite scene from Z, from this new book? Do you have a favorite scene without giving away too much? No. The hot tub scene. <laughs> and that's all we're going to say about that. That makes me, yes, very <laughs> excited for people who didn't read it yet. <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. Do you have any strange book collections in your home library? Do you have anything that, like, if someone came over, they'd be like, why do you have this? Well, aside from all of the books about demons that I've got. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, I've read about vampires. Yeah, um, people look at my research books and maybe raise an, an eyebrow because, yeah, I do have uh, books about demons and, and spells and all kinds of, uh, yeah, all, all kinds of stuff that people kind of look sideways at. <laughs> do you think that there's, like, an, a new trend coming, or do you hope there's a new trend coming in paranormal, kind of erotica and romance? Uh, not, as, not a trend as much as I would just like it to be popular again, really. I mean, yeah. it, it's popular, but it's not it, its not nearly as popular as it was, so there aren't as many books out there. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I just got uh, my new uh, Romantic Times magazine. I think there were only like four book, four paranormal books in there wow. reviewed. And um, I, I was just, I was shocked when I saw that. And there might have been six I, but but I was really really surprised by that and um, I'd noticed that I haven't been able to find as much you know what I like um, fortunately my favorite authors are still putting out books so I'm you know I'm just making do with that mm -hmm. now speaking of that we have a new question about your reading list what's on your reading list right now is there anything new coming out that you're like dying to read um you know I've been so busy uh, yeah. with my deadlines that I, I actually yeah. haven't been. I'm sorry, I keep like losing my screen here. So if I oh, I didn't I didn't notice. It's fine. Okay, you're cool. Um, okay, yay. <laughs> um, I've been uh, so busy that I haven't really been paying attention to what's coming up. You know, I, I a lot of times I'll just uh, pre-order something. You know, the whole one-click thing, and then it's yeah. just a surprise when it comes to my Kindle. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't necessarily have a list of what I want coming up because I already have it pre-ordered and then it kind of goes out my yeah. brain until it comes in. I hear you. Um, I get in a habit where I just keep reading the same authors and I'm like, I should really just branch out. And I'm like, no, this is my safe zone. So right now it's yeah. like, like Neil Gaiman short stories right now, which is pretty cool, but... Um, Cheryl Johnson says, do you have any plans to color your hair again? Love the purple hair that you had. Thanks, Cheryl. It's, it's colored. You can't really see it. Yeah, but, I see. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. there's, uh, well, anyway, it's, um, I do have color in it, um, but, yeah, you can't see it. The light's bad. But um, it is pink. There's pink all, on the, all the tips and right. then inside. So um, I, I promise I see it next conference. My hair will have color in it. <laughs> She's always coloring. I love that. Um, what's the best advice you'd give someone who wanted to write a novella specifically? Because you're working with like a smaller, you know, medium. What, what do you think you would tell somebody? You know, oh, novellas are hard. I mean, yeah. People think that they're easy because they're so much shorter. But that just means you have to work harder to get everything in so that people won't feel shortchanged. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that happens anyway, because if you're reading a favorite author, um, you want more. You don't want the story to end. Yeah. But I would say really just make sure you don't shortchange the emotion or detail. Um, you want the story to still feel rich, even though it's shorter. Um, and be careful about uh, rushing the endings. I have a bad habit of that. Even my my 
regular size novels. Um, so I always have to try to watch it. And after I'm all done, I'm always like, oh, gosh, I probably could have, you know, done a little better on that. But um, really watch those. Add lots of detail. Don't shortchange on the emotion. And um, watch the ending. Yeah. It's hard to find the balance, especially when it's, it's you have to make it succinct yet cover all your yes. bases. Um, yes. Do you have friends that read your work over and give you, you know, advice or do you just have like an editor like or do you rely on other people to kind of give you like it depends on how much time I have yeah. unfortunately I have a tendency to run up to the end of my deadline and that doesn't give time for anybody to read it before I send it to my editor yeah. um, sometimes I'll have Judy read something for me um, and Liz Berry who um, is with 1001 Dark Nights I'll have her sometimes look at it before I actually officially turn it in um, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm always running right up to my deadlines and don't have a lot of time for anybody to read it before I turn it in. I'll have them read at the copy edit stage sometimes just to catch anything that I might, you know, important little details that I might miss. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just hit those deadlines. <laughs> yeah, everybody does, right? I feel like I would not be able to. Who? I've never had an author on the chat here who's like, I handed in my manuscript a month early or like a week early. It's you're always fine-tuning, oh. always fine-tuning. Um, <laughs> Kathy Valentine. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Says, will we see more of Azagoth and Friends? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sorry, I got cat hair everywhere now. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, life. Yeah, cat, it's either cat hair or dog hair. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm still writing for 1001 Dark Nights, so there'll be another Demonica Underworld story coming out and, and all those as a goth and Hades and everybody will be in that. And then um, I have no doubt they will show up in the new series um, yeah. because I just can't, you know, not have yeah. as a goth. Yeah, right. So uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll still see plenty of them. Don't worry. Awesome. Elise wants to know about audiobooks. Um, is your A Thousand One Dark Nights book coming out in audiobook? I don't know if they. Really I, I believe so. Um, I, they've been working on uh, the other two, uh, Azagoth and Hades. Um, in fact, one of them might be out already. Um, I'll have to check on that. But uh, yeah, I, I do believe so. Awesome. Oh, cat. Jillian, Jillian just said, "Kitty." <laughs> Kitty, hi. Oh my god, I love everyone on here. Um, <laughs> What's the best thing about being a pet owner we want to know here at Book Trip? We love pets. Oh, everything's awesome about having pets. Except well, for except hair. for the fur and, and <laughs> cat attacking the computer right now. Um, no, they're just, you know, when, when you're sad, they're there for you. And um, the thing I love about having a dog is I actually get exercise. Yeah. Uh, you're forced to actually exercise your dog. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's health benefits. You know, and, and they keep you warm, and there's all cats, kinds of awesome things. Like that. Cats are not too great with the walking. I put not my cat, so much. Not I put so my cat on a leash, and it was really a sad, sad scene. You just, just fall over. Just, like, forgot how to use his legs, and was like, no, and just like curled up. Like, oh my god. I was like, I had such high hopes. It doesn't it doesn't happen? Um, I think that not, starts. <laughs> it was sad. Um, where's Hex? We want to see her too. This is coming from Willa. Hexa! Hexa! Pop? She's coming. She's running. All right, let's see. Hi, Hexa! Oh my god! Come right here. Look, look, Hexa, not the kitty. Hey! Look! Hi, hi. Hi, bud. She's all freaking out. She thinks I called her because I'm getting axe murdered or something, so now she's running off looking for the axe murderer. Good dog. Good puppy. Yeah, she's whining over there because she's all worried now. <laughs> her, uh, what a good dog. Jillian has another question. How do you keep track of your character's relationship and family lines? Do you use a character Bible? That's a great idea. As a matter of fact, I do. Um, I have a character Bible and um, that a awesome lady named Lily did where she read all of my books. All of them. Mm -hmm. And... Um, wrote down all the characters and, and oh uh, their relationships, how old they were, everything. So I have that. 
And um, as I write new books, I just add to it. And, um, and I'm kind of actually a little bit behind, but yeah, I do have a have a Bible, and, and then I just I add to it with each character. That is serious. That's serious dedication. That's awesome. That's I have a lot of characters, and I don't want to screw them up because I can't remember details like their eye color or their hair color, or, exactly. you know. Um, but I figure, you know what? They're paranormal. They can probably change that stuff, right? So if somebody has blue eyes in one book, who cares if they have brown eyes next, right? Totally. They can change on a whim. Totally yeah. fine. Now, what's your favorite book of all time? This is a question from Shelley Greenfield. Favorite book of all time. Oh, um, that, oh, that would be very hard. probably The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, I just love the Wheel of Time series. And that's the first book in it, and I've read it like 800 times because I have to reread it each time a new book comes out. Mm -hmm. And um, it would take like three years between books, so I'd read every, and there's like 13 books or something. Yeah. So I've read it a million times, and uh, that one is probably my favorite. But coming in a close uh, second, maybe even Ty, is uh, uh, The Sun in Splendor. By Sharon K. Penman. Um, it's a historical, historical novel, and it's just it's awesome. You you're a big fan of historicals, right? I am. Yeah. yeah. Bod bodice rippers or less classic. <laughs> the, the, old, the older ones, the classics, no. Um, more. I, I really like. Uh, I really like the straight historical yeah. novels. As, I, I mean, I've read a lot of historical romance too, mm -hmm. and I I love them. I just haven't had time um, as much as I'd, I'd like to recently. Right. But yeah, I really, really like them. And then it's one of the reasons I like the Sharon K. Penman books is because they've actually got a lot of romance in them. Yeah. And um, well, they're, they're violent and historical, but there's romance. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Bodice rippers to me are, I like, I like like hardcore historical facts. I'm a nerd like that. Yeah. But bodice rippers are, they have their place, absolutely. Um, have fans ever contributed to any of your stories? Have they ever said, hey, we think you should do this with this character or name this place? Do you ever take their advice or do you kind of just, I know some oh, authors incorporate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't think of a specific example of, um, of an idea right now. I know there's, there's a bunch of them. But um, I definitely take names. Um, a lot of times if I've got a reader whose name I love, I'll use that. Or um, a whole contest to have people name some of the characters in the books. Um, in fact, coming up in That's the Demonica show. Legacy series, mm -hmm. uh, some of the kids have been, you know, my readers named the kids. Yeah. So um, there's definite reader participation in my books. I love doing that. I like that. Now, and, you know, social media makes that so easy these days. It's awesome. Yes. Willa has another question. Willa's picture is like, um, I think it's like pea pods. That's her picture. <laughs> do your neighbors know you are this crazy author and do you know what they think? Laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> they do author. know. <laughs> yes, I know what they think <laughs> because my neighbors have actually come over to bring me Bibles. <gasps> no. Oh, no. Neighbors have actually come over and invited me to Bible studies, and I think I scare them a little. So, uh, yeah, my neighbors know, and I know what they think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. With your gothic chokers and your demon book collections. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I offer them one of my books, and for some reason, they're not that enamored. <laughs> they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Now, for anyone who just tuned in, can you tell us what you're working on next, like everything that's coming down the pipeline? Okay, um, coming up in September is a novella called Forsaken by Night, and it'll be the third story in the Moonbound Clan Vampire series. And um, it'll be in an anthology called Blood Red Kiss with Gina Showalter and Presley Cole. Oh my gosh, that's like my dream oh team there. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and then after that, there will be um, another 1001 Dark Nights book um, next spring. In the meantime, I'm thinking about a, maybe doing another novella or two in between. I've got a couple of Demonica characters who really need stories. Mm -hmm. And um, and then hopefully 
sometime next year you'll see the first of the Demonica Legacy books. Wow, that you, that's a lot. You have so much on your plate. We're so excited to hear all about this new stuff. And I just want to thank you again. We came to the end of our questions, but I mean, we could talk for hours about Buffy, but I have to cut it off at some point. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but thank wow. you so much again, and you guys all need to check out Z and all the hot new characters and Larissa's new book. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, thank for you. the wonderful. Take Bye. care. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs>